Next on the list we talk about, another DJ who I'm a big fan of and somebody who, again, I discovered courtesy of Hall Berlin. They need to open an agency. That's what they need to do. Hall Berlin needs to open an agency or some sort of representation thing because the amount of people I feel like I've discovered through that platform is crazy. Before, maybe, I think Berlin used to have this radio station. I forgot the name of it. They had an online radio station that was basically equivalent to what we have here in the UK called NTS. And I feel like that was a, maybe the main center point or the main meeting point you could find people. But I feel like Hall's basically been now taken over. So now that's where you can find everybody who maybe is doing stuff in that city, who's kind of noteworthy, who should maybe be paying attention to. And I love that. I love that about it. And one of the persons I discovered on there is a DJ called LOL Snake. And they had a really cool um, feature here. And um, what you call it? And, um, and a mix as well that it is for Mix Mag. Um, and it's, the title is here, Playing Feelings, LOL Snakes, Mood Inspired, DJ Set Speak Directly to the Dance Floors. Very good profile. But I want to scroll to some answers that LOL Snake here provided regarding Bergheim and just kind of, you know, her kind of upbringing and start in DJing, which I thought was really, really interesting. So let me see where I can find it. There we go. Um, yeah, yeah. So you've spoken about Bergheim being so pivotal, so, so pivotal in forming so many relationships in city alongside the other clubs what do you think it is about berlin that makes it so easy to nurture these bonds and create communities people love saying that isn't it? what's what's actually a community somebody that you just take care with you know on the weekends that's not really a community somebody that you you know asks if you can sleep on their couch that's not really much of a community but hey what do i know let's continue Sometimes, LOL Snake says, when you have a busy life, especially when you have been waiting, so wanting to meet specific friends, but there's maybe not been the time to do so, you always have to some time to see them on this afternoon at the club. So you'll catch up and create bonds over years. Okay, that's there's there's some point in that. I have seen a lot of um, you know, a lot of my kind of long friendships even till this day have been formed around you know nightlife and being out and about and whatnot and meeting people at all hours of the day and seeing people in vulnerable states or them seeing you in vulnerable states and then kind of bonding over that so i can understand this it continues there's a sense of freedom and openness that you can't find anywhere else at least from my experience where i feel like a big part of the queer community and not necessarily just queer community but also a party going community in berlin have this tinge of otherness that they may have felt whether they were nerdy or had experiences like mine or simply didn't fit in wherever they were from. So we all find ourselves in this little pot of club culture. I think there's this understanding of each other. And again, there's no prejudge in this regard, no pretentiousness and snobbiness. It really is a minimum here. If you want to have a little freak out, dance on the floor, nobody's going to be like, oh my God, what are you doing? You know, it makes you want to go back. It's very much a social space. Personally, I just let loose. And because of the opening times, the party's never ending. You can have a moment to really listen to music but then you can also spend two hours having a deep conversation with somebody that you know or an acquaintance that you didn't know so well but you can sit down in the club and have all the time in the world you really over the years establish bonds in a way that i think is really special there's a lot of truth to that but unfortunately it also has a double-edged side of it because from the times that i've been and again i've never lived in berlin but i've been there plenty of times just to holiday and whatnot so maybe you know the experience of living there is completely different but one thing i do think you know it can be a little bit annoying sometimes is that they do take themselves a little bit too seriously it, at the end of the day it, re it really is just raving it's just dance music it's not really that serious and some people especially the ones who aren't playing the ones who just attend parties they really take themselves seriously especially the ones who go to certain clubs all the time they feel like they're legitimately part of the flipping workforce they're part of the people that own it and something it's a very bizarre sense of ownership in the place that you have no equity in whatsoever apart from your sweat and apart from maybe some drugs that you dropped on the floor that's really strange but on the other side of the coin it also is quite nice to see a place or quite refreshing to see a place like Berlin that exists. And, it's, and again, it's unique. There's no place like that in the world because I don't think anywhere else could kind of get away with what they get away with. But it's nice to see somewhere where they take club, club culture seriously and they kind of put things in place around it to kind of support it from like, you know, the, the trains running all at all times during the day, especially on, during the weekend. Great. Other, you know, other transport things are pretty good, like the trams and the buses um the spat curves in terms of you know the little off licenses where they serve beer the club's been open a really long time um there is a bursary or some sort of grant that some clubs can sign where it kind of allows you to put soundproofing into your club to make sure that you're not impeding on your neighbors like there's all this kind of good stuff that kind of makes it 
you know, puts the chips in the club's favour in order to stay open as opposed to what we have here in the UK where gentrification is always number one, residents always take priority over everything, even if they move after the fact to neighbourhoods where already those clubs were established, they still kind of have ownership and precedent, which is really, really bizarre. But overall, I think that because a, a lot of good points that they make. Continuing on here says, when I first started DJing, LOL Snake said, it was really special to have those closing hours of a few friends left at a party just vibing and playing to them. That was really inspiring. I was working so much, so hungry to do more, and it gave me more pleasure. I was doing monthly concerts, promoting not necessarily electronic music and doing raves, doing parties, eventually moving to OM in 2018. It was quite nomadic. I did an event series called Queerdos that I started with a friend of mine, which was spoken word and performance art. That was very nice. It was that was very nice because I just wanted to create spaces that were reimagining the event format. In the UK, I was going to at least three shows a week, and in Berlin, the same, constantly out. I was more or less wanting to bring a new take of events in that regard and get time for myself and community around me. It was really hectic as I was DJing at the bars, I was part-time job doing bookings for a small venue here and the list continues. All of those things just don't pay so well so I was hustling. I loved what I was doing and it was all around nightlife where I wanted to be. Now, this was really cool and kind of refreshing and somewhat, uh, what's that thing called? A good reminder for me because a lot of this stuff I was also doing, but I got lazy and stopped doing in terms of putting on events and kind of consistently and, you know, um, with some sort of uh, persistence, putting myself out there at all costs at all times and seeing what kind of happens. Because if I look back at some of the better things that have happened in my quote unquote career, which is not really a career, but it's kind of a hobby that I'm really pursuing, most of it happened because I was just out and about, touching people, shaking hands, kissing babies, you know, metaphorically, all that sort of stuff. And you have to kind of be in around it. But of course, it can get tiring. Um, it can get a little bit, what's that thing called? It can sometimes get a little bit demoralizing, especially if you get nose, especially if you meet somebody that's got like a bit of a cunty attitude. It can be kind of hard to dust yourself off again and keep doing it. And usually people in nightlife have incredible egos. So that can be hard to deal with. But really and truly, the only way to actually do bits and bobs is to be out there. So it was a nice reminder from LOL Snake that I have to do more and kind of put myself out there and actually be out and around town and not just be complaining about things from the comfort of my own chair so big up lol snake for that reminder there's a really good mix there from them too if you want to check it out it's available now on flipping um what you call it it's available now on uh on mix mag so definitely check that out if you haven't already i'll put the scroll down here as you can see there there it is impact lol snake there you can see the track listing of what the mix features so i definitely recommend you check it out if you're interested please do check it out if you're interested because lol snake is definitely one of the good ones definitely one of the good ones